The GBA Consoleizer is a kit designed by Woozle that allows you to convert a Game Boy Advanced into a standalone console that you could use on your TV. It can upscale Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and original Game Boy games up to 720p over HDMI. And it has a single Super Nintendo controller port in the front so you can connect the Super Nintendo controller to play your Game Boy Advance games on your TV. The kit is available in two different forms. The first one is called the Face Hugger, which actually replaces the LCD screen with a little box that has the HDMI and Super Nintendo port on there. It basically lets you reuse the Game Boy Advance shell as the console. The second is the Full Case design, which actually replaces the Game Boy Advance shell with a cool looking mini console shell. Woozle released the file so that you can 3D print your own and I printed my own in this black and purple color scheme. This kit is a great way to give an old beat up Game Boy Advance a new life. So let's hop over to the bench and I'll show you how to do it. Unfortunately, the guide on Game Tech US's website is not the easiest to follow. So I'm gonna be following this video that Voltar made. First things first, let's get this Game Boy apart. All right, we took the board out of the case. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove this speaker. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bypass this volume knob by bridging the left three pins on the knob over here. We should be able to do that with my knife edge tip. Looks something like that when you're done. All right, next let's remove these two battery terminals. If we flip the board over, you'll see these two big solder pads right here. Again, I should be able to use the knife edge tip, add some fresh solder to these solder pads and pull off the battery connectors. It took a little bit of force, but you should be able to pull those connectors right out of there. All right, now we have to bypass the power switch so that the GBA consoleizer is always gonna be on. Voltar uses a Hydro Rear Workstation, and I don't have one of those, so I'm gonna try to add some fresh solder to these little legs here and try to pull this piece off. Now let's see if I can try to lift these ends up. I'm not doing a good job of keeping this switch alive. Let me clean this up with some isopropyl alcohol. This switch might be toast, but I think this came out okay. I really would recommend using a hot air rework station on this part. There's one last thing we have to do to the power switch area, and that is to bridge the left two pads together. This bridging is pretty hard to do with the knife edge tip, so I'm gonna use my normal chisel tip.
and there are those two pads bridged. Now we're gonna remove this silver oscillator here. This is one of the tips from Game Tech's video about this. He actually just uses his pliers to twist off this oscillator and then cleans up the pads. Yes, it does destroy it, but this is gonna be permanently set up as a consoleizer, and I'm sure that we can get a new one of these to replace it if we have to. Yeah, that was pretty easy. Now we're gonna do the wiring for this breakout board. It's gonna sit on top of the CPU like here, and I'm gonna reference this picture that I found on Game Tech's website about how to wire it up and where to position it. He recommends for the full case to hot glue the breakout board to the CPU, so that's what I'm gonna do. I think that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna tin every pad on this breakout board except for this reset and one and two up here. The next thing I'm gonna do is pre-tin all the pads that we're gonna to go to on this left side. I'm gonna be using this Kynar wire that Game Tech provided, and the goal is gonna to be to try to make these runs as short as possible from the breakout board to the points on the GBA. I'm gonna start on the top and I'm gonna work down on this side. That's it for the left side here. Let's wire up this battery connector. So we've got to put some wires from these two points down here to the points where the battery connectors used to be. And again, Game Tech provides this piece of wire to use. That's the battery wire connected. Now let's go solder the wires on the right side of the board. First things first, let's tin all these points. It's probably easier to solder it this way around. And that's what the board looks like when it's all wired up. Let's put the board aside. Let's focus on soldering together this power switch. Now there is a spot for an LED on here, but I don't have one right now, so I won't be wiring it up. But you can always just take a look at the instructions on Game Tech's site for how to install an LED and a resistor that goes along with it. I'm gonna use this roll of tape to hold the switch while I solder it. Let's just do one of these legs first and then we can line up the rest of them. and then you can solder the other ones. Next, we're gonna wire up the included three wire ribbon cable to the switchboard. All right, let's tin up the board and solder the wire to it. And it's gonna look something like this. Before we connect this to the actual GBA consoleizer board, Let's attach this Super Nintendo controller port. The controller port goes on the top side of this board here. We're just gonna get all the legs through and flip it over. Game Tech says that we should plug a controller in here so that we keep all of these pins aligned. I think you wanna make sure that this board is gonna stay flat against this gray part of the controller port here. I'm just gonna solder one of these legs and then straighten it out. Right, so now the board is aligned with this part right here. We still need to cut these pins flush 
And I'm gonna try to use my side cutters to do that. This is probably gonna beat them up, so I'm gonna use my crummy pair. And that's what it looks like after. Let's attach the power switch to the board itself. There are three pads labeled down here. They're gonna match the labels on the power switch down here. So make sure to line up the wires from here to the board down here. Mine ended up like that. Now that we have the two main pieces assembled, we're gonna attach the flex cables and do some testing. First, let's attach the flex cables to the consoleizer board here. The smaller one goes on the right side here, blue side up. Now for the other flex cable, this is where you're gonna have options. If you look at the LCD cable connector on the Game Boy, you'll see a number in the bottom right. Mine says 32, but some say 40. All the kits come with this 40 pin cable by default, so if yours says 40, you don't have to worry about anything. But if you have a 32 pin Game Boy Advance, you're gonna need this 32 pin adapter cable. If you're using the 32 pin cable, then it says consoleizer side up, but if you're using the other 40 pin cable, you're gonna have the blue side up. Now let's attach this smaller cable to the breakout board. Again, blue side up. And then we'll plug in the LCD flex cable. Mine says this side up. Or if you use a 40 pin Game Boy, you're gonna have the blue tab down. Now you should be able to connect the game, an HDMI cable, and a USB cable, and you should be able to start it up and see if it works. I tested out the consoleizer and everything was fine, so let's go ahead and put this thing in the case. Let's disconnect the flex cables from the consoleizer. And put the Game Boy part aside, and we'll bring in the case. Let's put the consoleizer part into the case. You might need to push through the controller port part first in order to get the ports down in here. And then we're gonna back it up. Push down a little bit so that the ports come out of the back here. And make sure the holes here in the case line up with the consoleizer. Go ahead and put these four screws in here. This might be a little bit difficult because this 3D printed case doesn't have any threads. I had to use my drill to do it. So just be careful if you're gonna use a drill, go slow and get these four screws in. Next, we're gonna attach the power button into the left hole down here. The right hole here is for if you have an LED on the board, but I don't, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stick the power button through the hole there. We're gonna put the lock washer and this nut. And then we're gonna use an eight millimeter socket to tighten that nut down. Don't go too hard with this because this is just plastic. I tried getting this 3D printed piece on the button here, but the hole in the 3D printed piece was too small. The size of this button is about an eighth of an inch. So I, I drilled out a hole with an eighth inch drill bit into this piece here. And then that button should just go right on the front there. That's pretty satisfying. Let's bring the Game Boy back and attach the flex cables. Let's start with the LCD connector. Mine says this side up, but yours might be blue. Now let's do this other cable, blue side up. And then we're just gonna lay the Game Boy down. The GameCube port has to go in here first. Something like that. And go ahead and screw this down too. These screws are a little bit easier than the ones for the consoleizer. Now the kit comes with these magnets. These long skinny ones are supposed to go into the four corners of the case here. And these flat ones are supposed to be glued onto like a top shell here, like this one. I'm actually planning to get an acrylic top for this, so I'm not gonna use these magnets yet, but I'll leave a link below for how to put these magnets into the case. All that's left is this little cartridge blocker thing. And the cover. Luckily, my top actually fits pretty well into the case here. So I don't have to worry about anything falling out. That's what it looks like all assembled. 
I'm gonna go ahead and do some testing. When you first get the GBA consoleizer set up, you might not have audio. You have to go into the menu by holding select and down, go to the system menu and enable DVI plus. That will enable audio over HDMI. In the picture menu, you can change the different colors of the consoleizer. I changed mine to Game Boy Advance, which really improves the color when playing Game Boy Advance games. Leave a like on this video if you found it helpful and get subscribed if you want more modding videos. I'll see you in the next video.